Hello everybody. Just to catch you up on what we've done so far, we took a Murray LT1000 riding lawnmower, stripped it down to the frame, lowered the frame to about an inch and a half off the ground, and then adjusted all of our drivetrain components so that it'll fit with the new frame location. Next thing we're gonna get to is the bodywork. And just a heads up, I've never done bodywork, but it's sheet metal, it's welding, and it can't be too hard. And worst case scenario, I'll get a tub of Bondo, slap it on there, let it dry. So we're gonna learn this together. Let's get right into it. So the first hurdle we're gonna have to get over is getting rid of these back fenders. I'm gonna cut a line straight down the side and off right here, and I'll do the same thing on the right side. Once those are out of the way, we should for the most part be able to set this pan down onto our frame, and I will have to cut a section out of this tunnel to fit our idler pulley. assembly. So what I'm going to do is cut another section out of my body panel right here. So for now I'm going to mark it from the back side and then I'll pull it off and cut my piece out. Let's see how well that works. The black Sharpie on black paint. That's not bad. I can make that out. All right. Let's mark it out with some tape. All right, let's try this again. Still hitting the assembly and the clutch rod that pushes the clutch pulley out of the way. So I'm probably just gonna cut a V right up here and join it in with this section. And that'll give me all the clearance I need down there. Fingers crossed on this one. Well, we've cleared everything except this little extension of our clutch frame. So I'll just lop that part off right there and this should sit right down. trim my lip right here so I have enough room for my tie rods to come out. Well, 
It may look a little janky now, but it's sitting flat on the frame and it's not interfering with anything. So now I need to make a couple of stabilizing braces for the back end and then we'll start working on the fenders next. So to build this rear stabilizer bracket, I'm gonna be using inch and a half by inch and a half by eighth inch angle iron and quarter by two inch flat strap. The first thing I'm gonna do is put my level up here on the sheet metal and I'm gonna raise the seat until it's level and measure the distance between the top of the frame and the bottom of the sheet metal. And that's seven and three eighths inches. It's all finished up, welded, bolted in place, nice and tight. I'm going to grab the body, throw it up on here, and see how everything lines up. Not bad. Put some bolts in it. That's it for the rear seat bracket. Everything's bolted and welded up. It's firm. It's ready to be sat on. For the sheet metal, I got this old shell of a forklift battery charger. I'm gonna tear down and harvest as much as I can out of it, and I should have just enough to get this mower finished out. What I'm gonna do is place this fender about where I want it. I'm gonna use my tape measure. I'm gonna measure from the table up. My tire is sitting at just under 17 inches. So I'm gonna want my fender to sit about an inch and a half above the tire. So that should put me at about 18 and a half inches. The deck of our seat right here is sitting at 12 and a quarter. So we need to come up six and a quarter inches and the overall width is going to be 16 inches. So what I'm gonna do is take a piece of cardboard sheet and I'm gonna hold it up here and I'm gonna trace the outline of the sheet metal. So there's the profile of our seat. I need to come up six and a quarter inches, make a couple marks, and I'll just cut straight across here, and then I'll cut out this outline. Then I can lay this on my sheet metal, cut out the shape, and it should sit right on top of there. And then I can put a couple tacks to hold it in place. Here it is. It lines up pretty good. So the next thing I'm gonna do is get the paint cleaned off of both surfaces. And then I'll be able to set this up here, make sure it's square, and put some tacks on it. One more quick little thing I forgot to do before I tack this up. I wanna make a mark right in the apex of this corner. And I'm gonna draw that straight up so I can trim it off there. And this piece will end right on that line and another piece will begin where that ends and help fill in this space. That looks just about perfect. So before I tack this on, I'm gonna lay this on top of another piece of sheet metal and use it as a stencil so my other side will match almost exactly.
side's good. Now let's tuck on the other side. See, I made a line down the side of these vertical pieces. Measured from the table up on all four corners and then connected to draw a straight line down the side. With that line, I'm going to align my fenders so that this will sit level to the ground, theoretically. So the next thing I'm gonna do is cut out the sheet metal that's gonna fill the gap between my fender and this vertical piece. I need to measure the distance between the two and that's about five and three quarter inches. So I'm gonna get a piece of my cardboard and cut out a rectangle that's five and three quarter inches. And I'll make that rectangle fit the shape and profile of this fender and then lay it out on a piece of sheet metal, trace it and cut it out. And then I'll be able to weld that sheet metal to this fender and then weld that whole assembly to this vertical piece. pretty well. I'm going to flatten this out, lay it on a piece of sheet metal, trace it out, cut it out, and then make those same bends in the same spot on the piece of sheet metal. I'm going to try it on the other side too. Let's see. I think that'll work. Should be able to use one template for both sides. I got my fender extension pieces cut and cleaned up. I'm going to mark where my bends need to be. Now to bend it, I've fashioned this highly technological device that's going to bolt to my table and allow me to clamp the piece down and bend just a certain section at a time. and bend these down to the right angle. And those look about even. Move on to the next step. pretty good. I'll unbolt it, try to tap everything out as flat as I can, and then start welding it to the fenders.
came out looking half decent. Pretty similar. So let's get the fenders up here and start tacking everything together. After getting everything lined up with the fender, I do have a small gap that's gonna need to be filled, but it's not impossible. So let's get to it. side and like I said we'll have a bit of a gap to fill there but it's not impossible There's our other side, We're ready for welding. This gap's not as bad, but I think they're both gonna turn out just fine. I got a welding rod here. I'm just gonna knock all the flux off of it and I'll use that for my filler metal. Before I can tack the fenders back on, I need to handle my shift lever situation. As of right now, it's sticking out about 15 feet, and I have this handy little doodad that used to control the mower deck or the blade and gauge, something like that. I'm gonna cut it off pretty close to the angle right here, and then I'll cut my shift lever right here, and I'll be able to weld them both together. And this will basically sit right about there and be able to have full range of motion as we go back on with the body, we'll just work around this so that we still have full motion. I'm gonna cut this off for now. I'll cut the shift lever shaft off for now. And we won't weld this back on until we pull the body off and get a little extra room in there. And also pull the axle out, or at least pull the tire off. All right, we got our shift lever out of the way. We're ready to start doing our fenders. And to help us, I made some one inch by eighth inch triangles. I'm gonna weld onto this vertical sheet metal lined up with my Sharpie mark. And then I'll be able to set my fender on that, make sure everything's level and start tacking it all together. I got a couple hammers in between the tire and the fenders on both sides right now. And at first I was using my level, but since the table's not perfectly level, it was a little bit off. They seemed to be in towards the center. So I took the level off and I stood back a few feet, looked at it and eyeballed it. And it looks about as straight as I can get it. So to hold everything in place, I'm gonna take some eighth inch by one inch flat strap. And I'm gonna weld the top back of this seat together. And that should hold everything tight while I finish getting all my sheet metal work done. Once I come back and cut this off, I'll have another piece that I'm gonna weld in place of this flat strap. The first piece of sheet metal I'm gonna work on the front half is gonna be a strip that runs from this piece down to this piece. And I got it cut out of cardboard right here. So it's basically gonna sit just like that. And that should add some rigidity so we don't have to really rely on that eighth inch by one inch flat strap holding everything together on the back side. After we get this piece welded on on both sides, then I'll start working on the rest of the 
patchwork over here. I'm guessing it's gonna be about three more pieces of sheet metal after this one of various shapes, sizes, and all that good stuff. So let's get this cut out of sheet metal first, weld that in place, and then we'll start planning our attack of the rest of it. After getting everything tacked together, I realized I have a little bit more clearance under the right side fender than I do under the left. So on the left side, I can just barely get my hand in there. On the right side, I can go almost all the way in. So I'm gonna cut the tacks on the right side and shift that fender forward maybe about a quarter inch, and that should match these up and get them looking right. did help quite a bit on the inside. They're about the same, but the outside, this one sits a little bit higher than this one. So I'm gonna cut this back tack, and bend it up just a little bit, and then I'll re-tack that, and that should give me pretty much matching clearance on both sides. Well, it's just about as much time as I wanna spend on these back fenders, so let's spin around to the front side and we'll start working over there. So my plan to finish out the rest of the sheet metal is to start with a vertical piece that's gonna look similar to this, but it's gonna be angled down coming right here. So I'll trace it out on cardboard, cut it out of sheet metal, and then I'll tack it in place. And that'll give me a nice wall to work against right here. And I'm gonna do that on both sides. And then the next piece will be a flat piece about six and a half inches wide that's gonna fill up this spot and come down flush with the end of this line and go over to that vertical piece. Once I do that on both sides, then there should be one last rhombus kind of shape that's gonna fit in right here and close out and join all of these pieces together. So on each side, I have three more pieces to do, six pieces total, let's just get through it.
real quick side note. I took the mower off the table for the first time since lowering it, and after setting it on the ground, it's pretty low. Let me show you what we're working with. It's pretty low, right? And I can just barely fit between the fenders here. So I may have to lay off a couple dinners every now and then, but I think it's gonna be great. Next thing I'm gonna do is work on the tunnel. Once I get that finished up, I'll get our steering tower back on here, and then we'll work on the hood, and we'll call this a day. All right, so to do the tunnel, the first step that I'm gonna take is building my front wall right here. The tip of this pulley shaft is about two and a quarter inches up from the top of my floor pan here. So I'm gonna come up about two and three quarter inches on this front piece so I can give myself a good amount of clearance right there just for any occasion. Once I get this piece tacked on there nice and square, I'm gonna draw this shape out of cardboard and it's gonna come up even and eventually these pieces are gonna curve and meet in with the fender right here. And then there'll be a flat sheet that sits on top of everything to blend it all together. So I'll have the front side here, two sides that curve with the body and blend into the fender right there. And then the top flat sheet. show you where I'm at so you can see what my plan is I got the front side in right here I got my right side in and it's gonna curve and just blend right into this panel and the bottom side there's just a hint of a gap but it won't be too bad that'll all be blended in and then we can sand it down and smooth it out and make it look like it's meant to be back to the grind tacked up. I did have to use my first new raw piece of sheet metal, but to be fair, it was left over from a past project. So, I don't know, probably use like $5 worth, $10 worth at best. Now it's time to get our steering box up here, our steering console, get it somewhere in the vicinity, figure out how far out we need to notch, cut that stuff out, start bolting everything back together. Once we get it all bolted up and mocked up, then we'll take it back apart, put full beads on everything, and we'll be on our way. All right, well, I think all the technically difficult stuff is officially behind us. We have a little bit more sheet metal work to do. We have to get the console mounted up and a lot of welding on all the body panels to get everything solid. Once that's done, I'll be able to cut out the new slot for our shifter and figure out the brake situation, and we'll go from there. If you like what you see, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. Give me a comment down below if you got something on your mind. And subscribe so you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video. Well, that's not
not bad. 